alpha is underway. We did a full stream of the first zone. We completed that zone on Bloody K. We did a bunch of delves. We did the dungeons. It's been really, really good so far, honestly. I think like the best thing about it is like the actual visual fidelity. The zone looks so freaking good. They keep outdoing themselves year after year. It's really wild. But we got some class changes, okay? We also checked out the two different options we have for Blood Decay. We even went Frost and checked that one out too. Uh, but this is the big stuff, you know? People have been talking about huge class changes for their classes. Monk especially got some apparently crazy changes. Here's the poster Death Knight. Yeah, not very long. Uh, but I want to use this opportunity to talk about some things that could and should happen for Dragonflight. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on it as well. I said Dragonflight again. I mean War Within. The alpha is for the war within, not for Dragonflight. Anyway, yes, I'm very excited about the future of classes. You would know that uh, the hero talent system is the thing I'm the most excited about flavor-wise. And uh, so far, so good on the alpha. So they just posted this. Let me read this to you guys, and we'll talk about what I think they should do. So it says, uh, it's going to be a few builds before they actually make any Bloody K or I guess Death Knight in general changes. So this is kind of just them warning us, I guess, maybe giving us some opportunity to talk beforehand, which is what we're doing with the video. And but they say multiple things in here that it's like, this is exactly what I want to hear. We'd like to outline some goals with the changes to give a better idea of what to expect. There's only two goals. Reduce the amount of resource flooding that affects each spec to varying degrees. So just stop right there. What do they mean by that? Uh, I, I don't know a lot about the DPS specs, but... I think what they mean by that is the fact that you can overcap on resources very easily. Now, when they say resource, the first thing you think of is runic power, obviously. But I don't know if that is where Blizzard would end the discussion on resources. I think they might also mean bone shield. And for a while now, I've been worried because I feel like Blood DK is almost like it's getting easier to play and it's almost not intended to be as easy as it is because of how much runic power and how much bone shield you can generate with very low effort in the past this was the hardest part about blood death knight you had to walk this tightrope of keeping bone shield up especially on the first two globals of a pull and then managing your runic power alongside that in Shadowlands season one this was why the spec was so bad and then by Shadowlands Season 4, it became extremely easy. And then all of the power pretty much that they got in that way just carried over into Dragonflight Talents. And if you followed my Dragonflight Talent discussion in the alpha especially and the beta of Dragonflight, you would, I mean Dragonflight that time, uh, you would know that it was like, I was shocked. I was like, oh my God, you just have so much runic power. It was absurd. And to this point now, you know, I still feel like you have far too much runic power access and uh bone shield maybe not you know tombstone is a huge part of the rotation but it is a talent like i mean it's not mandatory i think everybody on the planet is going to take it but it is you know i don't know how they decide that like if they make talents and the talents are used by 99.9 percent of the people do they bother tuning around not having the talent i don't know Anyway, uh, I think there might be more discussion here than just runic power. So I'm a little worried about that because I do think Blood DK is actually in a state where they could probably get nerfed and that would kind of suck because they're not looked at as one of the best tanks right now, but they still have kind of rotational flaws that probably make them too easy to play. Anyway, this is the big one. Reduce the throughput nodes towards the end of the tree. It currently has nine such nodes that add a lot of tension and makes it hard to flex into utility you'd otherwise like to take. Not that hard for me. While we don't plan to outright cut the DPS throughput nodes, we will rather make them easier to pick up as you naturally progress through the tree. This allows you to focus on capstones, the capstones on much more utility or defensive focused talents. So, yeah, hey, welcome to the channel. If you're unaware, I do not take uh, Eternal, what's it called? Uh, empowered Rune Weapon, all right? It's a very frequent discussion point. And that's why. Like, they basically just told you why I don't take it. Uh, because there's other utility I would rather take. And like I was just saying in the resource flooding situation, that is basically a pure DPS talent. It does not help you defensively because every time you would use it, you are already flooded with resources during that window. So you'd either use it extremely poorly offensively and a very minor defensive benefit, 
or you'd use it purely for its offensive haste benefit. And, you know, that's that's all the spells there for. Now, unfortunately, this season, uh, or whatever, in Dragon and Alf, this is going to get really confusing. Season four is coming up. We're not talking about season four. We're talking about season one of the Alpha, you know, potential war within season one. In that season, you are then going to have a whole new layer of complexity to your rotation. And I think the uh, Deathbringer one is going to really encourage you to use uh, some talents, some some builds, some play styles that I'm not currently that eager to try. So I hope that it will continue, you know, to be iterated upon, and then I will be more eager to try it. Right, the icy talents thing, and uh, yeah, just a more offensive focus. I'm really eager to see how that plays out if they do change the talents, because for me right now it's like, should I take something like Wraithwalk? which I fully like fully believe it has a untold value in the mythic plus pug scene or should I take something that's an offensive benefit like to me I it's a it's not even a remote choice like I would never take something that's pure offensive over something that will help me tank but that sucks because it's a powerful talent you know what I mean so anyway they have another little blurb here about blood Blood suffers from a lack of viable build options because it has to invest so heavily into the tree to feel like it functions. To some degree, all Death Knight specs suffer from this a bit more than other specs due to their unique leveling experience comparatively. Is that right? I don't know about that truth. I don't know if that's the truth. We want to see where we can shift some abilities and talents learned in the spec tree that would make more sense baseline to not only smooth out build diversity, but also improve the leveling experience. So they're talking about leveling, which is like a whole different, like it scratches an itch I didn't expect to be scratched. You know what I mean? But I don't know what they're talking about. Like, I have no idea what they're saying here with, uh, what did it say? Unique leveling experience. What What are you talking about? <laughs> it's, everybody has the same leveling experience now. I mean, I get that the original Death Knight started at 8 and they have like a, they get to like twelve or fourteen or something like that now. But it's like, what does what does that have to do with anything? Like, I don't, I have no idea what they're referring to there. If anybody has any thoughts on what that might mean, let me know. But I do not think all Death Knight specs suffer from this a bit more than other specs due to their unique leveling experience comparatively. I think they suffer from the fact that there are too many talent points in their talent tree. I wanted to make a video on this back in the Dragonflight beta, but I just kind of forgot. But at one point, I had a spreadsheet of every uh, talent point uh, required to fill out the tree. And I don't remember exactly how it was compared, but I do remember it was not favorable for Blood DK. And tanks like Prot Warrior, it was like night and day. Like they had like 10 less talent points or something like that. Uh, so obviously things have changed a lot since then. I don't know how that would break down now. But in general, I feel like Blood DK just has far too many important talents and they're just too high up on the tree and it's impossible to take them all. So when they say uh, we want to shift some abilities and talents learned in the spec tree that would make more sense baseline, the first thing that comes to mind should be Gorfine's Grasp. I would like to see Gorfine's Grasp turned into a class talent, actually, but I would very happily settle for it being a baseline spell for blood. Uh, this used to be a class talent, quote unquote. It used to be something all three Blood DK, all three specs could take back in Mist of Pandaria. And that was a very uh, useful buff to Blood DK. I keep saying that, but it was a very useful augmentation for the DPS specs. Because if you remember in Mogushan Vaults, there was a, a great fight for that. And it was literally like just bring as many death knights as you can to make killing the ads on the final boss easier. So those days are long over now as the DK DPS have no access to this, but they do have slap hands. So I think a lot of people probably just stopped caring about it and will getting Gorfians help them much with slap hands in tow. I think, uh, yes, if it's baseline, absolutely more utility for five mans is huge. And that will effectively give them yet another AOE disrupt which would be great for the DPS specs because I feel like they have a serious lack of identity in the Mythic Plus scene. And you can pretty much see that season after season, they're just never going to be brought because their utility kit is not very good outside of like if you're playing Blood and uh, they're kind of just a worse version in that way even. So, 
But what else could they be referring to? It says they will allow us to focus the cap allow us to focus the capstones on much more utility and defensive focused talents. So this probably tells me that in the class tree, they're going to move slappy hands. Okay. Like I would expect those three things to get moved. It sounds like they're going to completely redo the talent tree. And I don't know if every spec in the game is going to get something like this. Cause we've seen some crazy ones already on the alpha. Uh, but this could be big. This could be a real shakeup. And then for the actual blood stuff, uh, they say specifically um, make more sense baseline to not only smooth out build diversity, but improve the leveling experience. So I think the number one thing that they need to do is make Red Thirst either a baseline spell or something way further like to the start of the tree. Red Thirst is not like, I don't know how many people are playing without it, but to not take it with, like if you have the um, Sandland tree, I don't see how you would ever consider playing without Red Thirst. I mean, unless I'm way off on how powerful it's going to be, it seems like Vamp Blood is now going to be your strong one of your like pretty much your strongest offensive CD. So that's something that really seems impractical to keep that far down the tree or up the tree, or however you want to say it. It doesn't seem like it should be that hard of a talent to take. And uh, people always talk about this in my chat and in the Discord and stuff. And so I want to give credit where credit's due. Uh, people say that that talent should not be two points. It should just be one point, And that would completely change the whole tree. Like literally change the whole tree. Because then you'd be able to take Umbilicus and, you know, you'd be able to take everything you'd want, right? Nobody really wants Bone Storm. I think that's another problem. How do you fix Bone Storm? I have suggested making it into an actual talent or an actual spell like that doesn't require any runic power, a CD, I mean. That would solve pretty much most, like I'd say that completely solves the problem. Is it a desirable talent at that point? Still no. Honestly, I probably still would never take it. Uh, in the current tree, I would not even consider it, honestly. But at least you wouldn't be like, nah, I can't. Even if you take... Because like the thing that sucks about Bone Storm is even at its best case scenario, a situation where you do not need any defense whatsoever for the entire duration of it, and you're very able to build runic power in and around that window, it still competes. Like you can never use it on single target. You know what I mean? Like it's always going to be worse because it costs runic power. So like even if you're flooded with runic power, like they're saying, you'll never take this talent. So you have basically like that talent is dead. Then you have whether or not you want the DPS talent or you want Umbilicus. Like that's the other big decision. And then in the way side, you have uh, Gorfiend's Grasp, which is just totally out. Like no, nobody takes Gorfiend's Grasp. I, I would, I think like literally no, I mean, I don't know what you would be dropping to take it, but you better be damn sure you need that. Cause that is without, like, that is an absurd trade-off. So anyway, uh, this is a lot of talk about almost nothing being said and done, but I am very excited to think about what the future might look like for Blood because I do feel like both the Sandland and Deathbringer trees are fucking spectacular. I had played them both today and I am so excited about what they might look like and how they might change the class. I'm already brainstorming, you know, what buttons I'm going to use and what's the weak ores and stuff. I'm going to need to track all this stuff. It's very engaging and I'm very excited. So please let me know what you guys would like to see changed. What do you guys think they might change? And uh, what do you think about this concept of resource flooding? Do you think this is good? Do you think we're balanced around it? Uh, do you think it makes it easier or harder to play? Some people have said it's harder to play because you basically you don't want to overcap on your resources, but you kind of can't avoid it at times. So some people have said to me like, oh, it's hard to not overcap on things like Bone Shield. When you pop rune weapon and slap hands at the same time, you're inevitably going to cap. And same thing with runic power in many situations. Um, but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I think that's just something that you just say, all right, we're going to eat that because the CDs are so powerful and you just go with what you have. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. We'll see you guys soon. Uh, make sure you guys are checking out the second channel. There is going to be a uh, leveling challenge starting on the alpha probably tomorrow. And I do want to hit that hard uh, because then, you know, next week is season four. So we won't be playing it a ton after that. But let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.